Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and are having a flare-free day. My name is Em and I'm an endometriosis advocate here in Canada and everything on my channel is related to living life with a chronic condition. I also have some videos about my recent pregnancy journey while living with endo. So if those types of videos are interesting to you, feel free to like and subscribe. I would love to have you a part of this channel. Now in today's video, I wanted to dive into the relationship between estrogen and endometriosis. And I wanted to dive into this topic today because in popular culture, in research, in so social media, I always heard that estrogen had a role to play with endometriosis, inflammation, and irritation, but I didn't really necessarily know how it impacted endo lesions and how that irritation was created by estrogen. So I did a little bit of digging and I found some research uh, that I'd like to share with you today. The sources that I found are linked down below if you want to do a little bit more digging and reading on your own behalf. Now before we dive into endometriosis and estrogen and the relationship between the two, it's important to realize where estrogen is is typically formed in the body. Well, estrogen is typically formed in the ovaries and testes, but it can be formed in other areas of the body, such as fat tissue, dermal fibroblasts, which is skin, osteoblasts, chondrocytes, and fibroblasts in bone. I'm sure that there are other locations that estrogen may or may not be formed, but these are the locations that have been included in recent human studies. Now, estrogen formed in the ovaries or testes are typically forced into the bloodstream and are spread throughout the body to further locations such as organs, tissues, and other cells. This is called endocrine signaling. Now estrogen made at other sites that are outside of the ovaries or testes typically act on themselves, which is similar to what endometriosis lesions do, which is known as autocrine signaling, or that estrogen acts on nearby tissue, known as paracrine signaling. Now when it comes to endometriosis and estrogen, endometriosis has a very unique feature to itself and that is it creates its own estrogen. And that is because endometriosis lesions found throughout the body has a specific enzyme known as aromatase that is required to create estrogen. You cannot have estrogen in the body without that specific enzyme. Now through research, we do know that estrogen irritates endometriosis lesions and ultimately causes inflammation. Now inflammation is a natural process in the human body. I want to stress this. It's a natural process that typically lasts a short amount of time. It typically happens when there is trauma or stress to an area of the body. Now the body's immune system to counteract that inflammation or irritation is to release white blood cells to start healing that area of the body that's experiencing inflammation. Although healing is happening internally through those white blood cells, to the outside, it looks to us like redness, swelling, and pain. Now typically with inflammation in the normal functioning human body, it doesn't last a long time. But when we have chronic inflammation, which is specific to endometriosis and other chronic diseases and illnesses, that chronic inflammation can create a lot of damage. Now chronic inflammation occurs when the body believes that it is under threat or siege or stress constantly. And that chronic stress can have the body believe that there is trauma that cannot be healed. With this chronic inflammation, it can also cause heightened pain. Because the immune system is unable to clean up endometriosis lesions because they're always present over time, this results in additional scar tissue and heightened pain. So when it comes to the relationship between estrogen and endometriosis, estrogen does in fact create a lot of irritation and inflammation at those endo lesion sites found throughout the body. And because endometriosis has its own ability to create estrogen, we now realize that that chronic inflammation will always be there if estrogen is always there at the site of the lesion. I also wanna stress that estrogen created at those localized endo lesion sites do not elevate the level of estrogen found in the bloodstream that is sent throughout the body. Now, when it comes to endometriosis, a lot of times individuals are prescribed birth control or Lysa, Lupron, and other drugs to help reduce the levels of estrogen found in the body to help eliminate that inflammation found at those local endo lesion sites. Now in theory, this does make sense and some individuals with endometriosis find relief through birth control or Lysa and Lupron. In reality, it doesn't necessarily address the idea and the fact that endo lesions are continuously making their own estrogen, which is creating that irritation. So it's kind of a blanket uh, treatment option because it's not necessarily addressing the root cause of that constant irritation found at that local lesion site. So because aromatase is the enzyme that is creating estrogen, another theory to help reduce inflammation in the body is to be prescribed a drug that is known as an aromatase inhibitor. 
Now, these drugs are often prescribed to breast cancer patients, and it basically reduces the ability for estrogen to be synthesized or created, which in theory helps reduce the levels of irritation found in the body. Now, the ability to target aromatase in endometriosis lesions specifically has not been studied. Research is still lacking, and ultimately, oftentimes studies include aromatase inhibitors in combination with birth control. So we don't necessarily know if those inhibitors alone will have an impact on endo lesions and the ability to create estrogen. Now, without the ability for endometriosis lesions to stop creating their own estrogen, it oftentimes causes those local lesions to be irritated, which ultimately causes causes local blood vessels to rupture, which ultimately causes scar tissue and adhesions to form. It's very important to recognize that this process of estrogen creation does not simply happen during a menstrual cycle. Estrogen formation can happen at any time at those local endo lesion sites, ultimately causing us to have pain outside of our menstrual cycles. So on my channel, I've always been open that my endometriosis flare-ups happen outside of my menstrual cycle. Oftentimes I feel them when I go on a long distance run or take on an intense spin class. So that is the reason why we oftentimes experience that increased heightened pain uh, because estrogen creation and that irritation happens all the time. So how do we address this nonstop irritation and inflammation found in the body? Well, that's when we turn to the gold standard of treatment for endometriosis, known as excision surgery. Excision surgery should always be conducted by an endometriosis specialist in your region. So what happens during excision surgery is endometriosis lesions are taken out or excised, and ultimately that stops the production of estrogen found at those local regional sites, ultimately reducing the levels of inflammation. When it does come to endometriosis, it's important to note that excision surgery is the gold standard, but oftentimes individuals have to have recurring surgery because endometriosis can in fact grow back. Uh, so it's important to recognize that that pain and irritation can return. Uh, it's also important to recognize that endometriosis is a full body disease. So you may have lesions, adhesions, and scar tissue uh, outside of the area where excision surgery is taking place. So that is the relationship between estrogen and endometriosis. I hope that this video has been informative. Uh, I, I found that this research was really fun to dive into. And again, I'll include those sources down below for your own research and insight. Uh, but feel free to comment down below if you knew this information or if you were surprised as much as I was when I first found out. And feel free to comment down below in the comment box how your endometriosis journey has been going so far. Do you have a name to your pain yet? Do you have a doctor that you trust? Uh, did you have excision surgery yourself? And if so, how are you healing from it? I hope this video has helped and I cannot wait to talk to you on the next one.